Welcome back to another episode in the Minnesota Vikings franchise, and I might even say the final episode in this franchise series, and not only that, the final episode on Madden 23. Um, the next episodes will be Madden 24 content. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to kick it off. I think some basics, how to import stuff, how to do sliders, and then I will be starting the franchise series. I've got a few teams in mind already. Can't really wait to get going with that content. And um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Today I will be wrapping up the season, wrapping up this team, wrapping up this franchise. It's going to be a more or less compressed off-season episode here. Um, don't don't really have any plans to go too much into details, but uh, I think it's worth just taking a look at a few things. We've got the yearly awards, of course, uh, but we already went through those ahead of the game, so we have those covered already. Um, we have some staff moves. I'm just going to be checking if some of our staff uh, moved or retired or did something similar. That is a no. A lot of changes here and there, of course, but nothing for the Vikings, so things stay stable. I think it's time before we end things here to do a little bit of a of an analysis here of this team and the way that the Minnesota Vikings are shaping up right now. Um, looking at our star players, of course, um, I would really like to pick out Karim here. He was a fantastic QB to start out with. He won us two Super Bowls, so you can't really say anything about his quality. Um, stats and contracts, of course, always interesting. He had two super solid seasons, 2,900 yards, 3,100 yards. He was very, very good. Got a lot of sacks, but not really his fault. He didn't play one single snap this year. I would have liked to give him one or two sort of goodbye games, uh, but that didn't really happen. It was always very close, always very tight. And we had to fight until the last second. Caleb Williams, uh, I knew what, what we had to do. I knew that we had to get a new franchise QB. And he is just everything that he was advertised to be. He's a fantastic player. So, so good. And already at a 98. Very, very close to being a scheme fit. Not joking. He, of course, he is a scheme fit. But he's so strong in the other categories as well. The scrambler, the field general, the strong arm. Which just means that he will be just growing exponentially if you start upgrading him and that in itself is just really fantastic the running back we've got alexander madison here 26 and 99 he was immediately a favorite of mine and also a fan favorite he's the third best running back in the league it was a great decision to go with him something that we would like to improve or that i would like to improve is the strength of course that's a little bit low but we could do that over time um, let's just take a look at his stats. 1,300 yards here for him. 1,300 last season. 839 in his first season. And before that, he was only a backup behind Dalvin Cook. But now he really broke out here and performed very well. 12 touchdowns. Fantastic. 72 broken tackles. He did have those fumbles. That is something that he has to work on. But that is that. Uh, Devin and Shane really fell into our lap as well. So strange. He was a free agent. And uh, although he doesn't look that crazy good, he really is very good. Due to his speed and acceleration and, and agility, uh, the carrying is as well very solid. means that he hardly ever has fumbles. Um, he's not really fully developed yet, but we will do that uh, over time. And he's 23 now with a 90 rating. So imagine what it'll be like in two years or three years time. Dwayne McBride, UDFA player, uh, absolutely great. Uh, 77 overall, but so well-rounded and really important player did what what we needed of him uh really had a very very good time with us here this season not as prolific last season probably his best season but overall just very very happy to have him around kareem hunt uh with the superstar dave trade he's a luxury at the fullback position i know that but we snapped him up so so cheaply in free agency and he's the best fullback to have in the league currently so there we go we're paying him two mil per year by the way so super cheap as well in the wide receiving room, we've got Jordan Addison, we've got Justin Jefferson, two superstars here. Justin Jefferson went down from an X-Factor, which is completely logical, because he only just won the Super Bowl three times in a row, and yeah, that usually takes that away from you. So I don't really understand. I don't care too much, though, because the abilities are not getting lost here, and this is what really counts. This is what makes him a lead. Third best ranked wide receiver in the game overall. Fantastic stuff. Jordan Addison here. He was so great from the beginning, sixth best ranked wide receiver in the league. And to be honest, looking at his age, 22 and 99, it's just absolutely great. Love this dude to bits. Nigel Sowell, we picked him up out of free agency with that X factor already. That was strange. 
but I don't really care too much about that. Um, he's a 95 rated player. He is currently 22 years old. So we have such a young wide receiving core with such a high quality, such a high roof. Really, really fantastic. Very pleased with him. Very important to have him around. Jalen Rager, uh, again, I, I only have good things to say about this dude. He might not be that fantastic in each and every aspect, but he has been doing so well when he stepped in. Raheem Kindley, 22 years old, 80 overall. He had the superstar gift, which probably helped his development. He's looking good. He's a very solid player. He's a good wide receiver number five and a wide receiver number six. That, of course, is Lance House. Let's, let's check out Jordan Addison's stats, shall we? Just want to see how many yards he got. 1,086 yards. It's his second 1,000 plus receiving season. Justin Jefferson. Let's see what he got here. He had 771. Actually, less because the wide receiver number one usually is a little bit harder to hit, in my opinion, at least. So sometimes even the wide receiver number two and three get more. Something that I wanted to check though was how many yards did Katie Williams get? 3,361 on his rookie season, 19 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Very nice for him. Well done. Uh, the tight ends, we've got Nate McKenzie, we've got Darnell Washington, Thomas Fidoni the second, Jeremy Ruckert. A very nice room. I think that I will be trying to keep Darnell Washington, of course, uh, but Nate McKenzie, Thomas Fidoni the second. I think uh, we still have no reveal now. Uh, um, and Jeremy Ruckert would be a solid room by its own. Uh, the offensive line, very happy with that. Christian Darius saw is fantastic. Ezra Cleveland, long-term deal, left guard here. Zion Nelson behind him. The rookie, also very, very high ceiling. At center, Marius Mims, 93 rated. Darren Dalcourt as the backup. Super solid, both young. And that is something that's important to me as well. Look at the ages. There's nobody that really needs a replacement quickly. Ed Ingram, 25-87. We held on to the LSU player. Gave him the fate. And he's really paid it back. Steve Avila, I think we're going to let him go, though. Um, we might get a better player out of free agency or just get him back. Evan Neal at right tackle. Um, we did make a trade to Brian O'Neill, left us, and we brought in Evan Neal. He's fantastic ever since. 23-98. So young, so good. Darnell Wright, a great player that can play every position on the offense and tight end as well, weirdly enough. On defense, Aiden Hutchinson is the... Game changer for me. For me, since we brought him in, I really felt like the defense made a huge leap, became very consistent, and I really, really was extremely powerful uh, in stopping opposing uh, uh, offenses. Uh, we have Tyler Barron here, a rookie backup. He's 23, 78, and I don't care what his death trade is going to be. He's a good player as it is, and if we keep developing him, in two to three years, he'll be fantastic. Right edge, Andre Carter. I stuck with the UDFA player here. I really like him, like his storyline. And he is very, very good in the core attributes that we need. Everything else will be growing over time as we improve this player. Uh, he's an 83 run stopper archetype. And if we improve that over time, everything else will get better. He will just get better. He's 24 only, so he has a good future ahead of him. Brandon Dorless, same thing, 21, 81, fantastic. I'm very, very confident that we have a good setup here. On D-Tackle, we've got Mason Smith, a rookie with a start of trade. We just drafted him uh, in the past draft. He's 96 rated, 96 block shedding, uh, 96 strength rating is what I wanted to say. Tackle is high, player recognition is high. It's just very reliable, great, great player. Jacqueline Roy, 24-89, and added to me, we added, but we're a fantastic setup. Young players, again, look at the ages. There's nobody that is really old. DJ Wanham is 26 at 84. Behind him, we've got Jeremiah John Baptiste. Who can continue to grow behind the safe hands of DJ Wanham here, who really, really stepped it up. And I haven't missed Danielle Hunter even once. And uh, really, really happy with this setup. Midline backer, Kenneth Murray Jr. We've got Jack Campbell and Brian Asamoah at the second. Uh, and this is a super solid setup as well. The players are young. We've got two young players, similar age, similar overalls. And whoever is better, I will give the go, of course. I have been uh, pushing Brad Asamoah a little bit more because he's a native player for the Vikings, of course, uh, from the 2022 draft. But Jack Campbell was here as well, and he's very helpful, of course. Right outside linebacker, Marcus Davenport, 2788. He might be leaving us. Clayton Smith is the rookie. He will be taking over the position. But if Marcus Davenport is willing to sign a deal, we're going to keep him around. If not, this is a position where we will add, of course. Um, I think that this is a very good player. I don't want to overpay, though. So we're just going to have to see how that works out. 
Quarterbacks, we've got Byron Murphy Jr., 2697. We've got Andrew Booth Jr., we've got Mikai Blackman, we've got Tyson Huntington, and a Caleb Evans. Fantastic cornerback group, especially Byron Murphy and Booth Jr. Mikai Blackman is fantastic. Tyson Huntington. And look at the ages. Again, nobody over 26. Great group. Louis Senior, 2494. We've got Noah Ikbinogany behind him as a good backup. But Louis Seen has this lockdown. Josh Metellus, 26 and 86. Brian Branch as his back of an understudy. And as soon as Brian Branch is better, he's going to be taking over the position. The kicker, Riley Patterson, pretty happy with this. The punter, Ryan Wright, also super solid. Um, we've got the practice squad here, and we've got quite a few players here that are just really, really good players. We can really mix a match here. Um, very, very pleased with what we have here. And at the end of the offseason, of course, we will be uh, sort of rebuilding this team to give it a new face for the next season. Uh, for now, going to be moving on into next week. 2024 season recap time. Let's just take a quick look at this here. Minnesota Vikings, three-time Super Bowl champion. Yes, in the three years since I started the franchise. We've got Caleb Williams, who's the Super Bowl MVP for the Vikings. Great, great stuff here. Well-deserved. Desmond Ritter, the overall NFL MVP. Don't really understand that one, but okay. Arthur Smith, coach of the year for the Falcons. All right. Josh Jacobs, offensive player for the Raiders, defensive player Miles Garrett for the Browns, offensive rookie for the Broncos, Emika Ikbuka, defensive rookie of the year for the Chiefs, is Dallas Turner. All right, thank you for that information. Uh, this is staff week. We don't have anything to do this week. Let us take a look at next week. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's take a look at the, rec uh, the retirements. I'm just uh, gonna check here, is there anybody uh, on our team that has been retiring or that is going to leave. The, I could have just got pressed up, right? Yeah, I know. All right, nobody retires here. Uh, we do have a few namely retirees here. Morgan Moses, Darius Slay, Taron Armstead, Zach Martin, Travis Kelsey, Khalil Mack. This is a who and who. Jordan Poyer, Von Miller. So many good players retiring here. So Kirk Cousins says goodbye, all right? It's a very nice send off here, basically at the end of uh, this uh, franchise series. I will be taking a look now at uh, the players that are ready to negotiate. We've got 61 mil cap room, and I'm more than confident that we will be doing the right thing with that money. So, Darnell Washington, let's keep him around, shall we? Um, I do feel like this uh, previous offer didn't really sit well with him. Um, what does he want? Let's just take a look at this. What does he want? He wants player friendly. He wants 3.2, but he did say no to 4. All right, that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to give him a 10 mil overall offer. I feel like that is good. Offer is perfect. Darnell Washington stays. That is great. Thomas Fidoni with a start of trade uh, is also here. Um, I want to keep him around because he is just really, really fantastic. Um, I like this player so much. Um, I'm going to give him 7 mil overall. I think this is a fair offer. All right, so Thomas Fidoni stays around as well. Lance House, the free agent that we brought in. We can get in. Another free agent, not really caring about him. Jeremy Rucker, same thing. Sorry, my man. Marcus Davenport. He doesn't really want to stay. I have the feeling. Um, Steve Avila, same thing. But Marcus Davenport, I sort of have grown somewhat attached to him. So I don't think that uh, I'm just going to let him drop. Uh, let's give him three years. Let's give him 3.5 here. And let's give him 4.5 here. That's a good offer. Marcus Davenport stays on the team. We say goodbye to Lance House, Jeremy Ruckert, and Steve Avila. All right, we jump straight ahead to the draft. I just skipped the whole free agency shebang. Don't really think that we need to do that at all. Um, we have uh, gaping holes at, in the staff, which is currently a problem, but we will be filling those later on. Um, for now, let's just take a quick look at our roster, right? Just to get an idea which positions we should be looking at. Um, currently, quarterback, no. Running back, no. We're fully set. Fullback, no. Wide receivers, I'm actually pretty happy with what we have here, so that is a no. The tight end room, I'm not sure. We just re-signed these two players here. We've got Nate McKenzie here as our starter anyway, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, the offensive line is looking extremely good. So uh, probably at right guard, we could use some help, but we can also get a free agent, so I'm not sure about this here. Right tackle is looking good. Left edge, we even have uh, additional players. Right edge, pretty happy with all the players that we have at the moment. 
we could be looking at the outside linebacker position probably but then again we don't really need a one a mid linebacker in addition mid linebacker could work uh, right outside linebacker we just re-signed marcus davenport uh, we've got the cornerback situation down we've got the free safety situation down we've got the strong safety situation down so i'm actually not really sure uh which way we should be looking here but okay uh, we're gonna kick off the draft now let's just take a quick look at the options in the draft here i don't intend to draft more than three rounds so let's just go through this together um look at the left you can see all of the positions that are really well set um, the defense might could or might be or could be a little bit better at times but to be honest I don't really see the big need to do anything here. The right guard position, certainly one where we need another player. Um, and on D tackle, I mean, we have a thousand players basically there. We only need one. So that is that. Uh, no real sense in drafting another D tackle, even if there are a few players that are really looking interested, like Gunnar Givens here. Um, I've got PJ Williams, looks interesting. And I think I'm going to be going with one of these offensive line players just uh, to. You know just bolster that that is basically the only need we really have let's go with pj williams out of smu here he does look quite capable we can switch him over to right guard and this is basically going to be the way i will be drafting here pj williams with a question mark number 63 here looks quite nice but uh no hidden death trade probably not even too bothered about this let's skip ahead in the draft and advance to the next user pick let's make our selection here we're just going to be going with a sort of best on board approach let's see what's around let's see what we can snaz here uh, we've got trajan williams a free safety that could be interesting but he's got a lot of b's do we have someone with a lot of a's here this is the approach right now probably not what i would be doing usually um but right now i don't need any specific position left guard ernest green let's go with this georgia player here maybe maybe we can get a good player here and we'll just put the best one that we pick on the uh on the offensive line on the right guard position so here we go uh third round pick is my final pick oh this is nice actually all right so third pick uh, third round pick number seven and who do we go for here i'm just going to be going through this let's just see who is a player that has a ton of a's and uh, this is the player that we're going to take Gavin Sawchuk is basically a player that's really nice, but I don't need the dude because he has only A's, but I have so many running backs anyways. What would I do with this player? No need here. All right. Anybody else here that can convince me? Drake may a field general QB. Yep, definitely not needing that one. Uh, what about a defensive player? Let's all right. Titan, Sedu Traore. But again, I just filled up the team. I just filled up that room. I'm extremely happy that we have held that group of players together right we've got a few a's here let's go with this one cj washington out of georgia third round third or fourth round pick a to c a d or an a to c probably probably not even the worst position to pick here because we could use one more mid linebacker gonna be going with this here let's see who's on the board shamar james uh cj washington does actually look like the best one like the best mid linebacker on the board currently are there udfa prizes hidden and that is it all let's let's go with this one here all right let's clickety click off we go and that is a normal death trade and that is the nfl draft for us see you at the recap so draft recap time now we have pj williams at left tackle we've got ernest green at left guard and we've got a mid linebacker cj washington and i will be immediately switching ernest green over to the right guard position he will be a backup player there, just to be clear about that from the get-go. Uh, PJ Williams left tackle. We've got Ernest Green now on the right guard position. And we've got CJ Washington on the mid linebacker position. All right, it's bye week and we're very close to starting a new season. So before we do that, we're just going to do two things. We're going to take a look at the free agents. I just want to see if there's anybody in here that uh probably shouldn't be in here uh, probably that we could use you know something like a really interesting prospect player or 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 something like that um a lot of good players that i can immediately see here but none that we actually need we could think about bringing in a mentor player something like that um but uh for the moment i don't see anybody that we really desperately have to bring in 
Um, some tight ends here, Tegan Quitoriano, 2576. This is interesting. What else do we have? Left tackles, Garrett Bollas, 82 rated. It's not bad, Lincoln Tomlinson, 81 rated. 81 rated, but no young players. This is what I would be looking for. Marcus Acosta is there. Chad Patterson is here. Center player. Oh, come on, man. Oh, dude. Why don't they? Why does nobody like you? Why does nobody like you, my man? Eh? He's cut now from the 2023 uh, draft, and I don't know why he's here. Uh, we've got right guard Phil Haynes. We've got Kendall Howe Miller. Yeah, this looks uninteresting. Right tackles. Really good player, Rob Havenstein, 85 overall, fantastic. Uh, we've got left edge rushers here, very interesting. We've got the D tackles here. So there we go. Also an interesting looking group. Very, very interesting looking, but of course we don't need one of these. Right edge, Cameron Hayward, 36 and 85. You could build a fantastic team with these. And trust my words, I will be doing that on Madden 24 again. I will be going for these free agents here after off-season. Basically, this will be my player pool. And uh, this will this will make things different. This will make things really challenging. Let's see what we can achieve with a team like this here. But uh, was that just Von Miller? No, it's Ventrell Miller. All right, because I thought he retired. Michael Hoyt, 27 years old. It's really not bad. Jose Ramirez, very interesting players here. As always, I could go crazy. And Michael Hyde, 86 overall, man. Von Bell, 86 overall. Marcus May, not really solid group. The only position that's really troublesome usually here um, are the are the quarterbacks because the good ones are picked immediately. So we would be stuck with a player like I don't know Geno Smith or Teddy Bridgewater, Derek Carr, some something like this, which usually turns out to be horrible. Uh, but we could also pick a rookie, someone la that has been cut here, and just work with these dudes here, try and improve them over time. You know, 61. Uh, 21 years old at 67 rated. Some of these here could certainly be developed further. And yeah, I could totally see myself going that way. All right, so we, we basically grabbed everybody out of free agency that I want to see. Next up, we're going to be decluttering the roster. Next, here we go. Quarterback room. We've got Caleb Williams. We've got Kerem. We've got Jaron Hall. This should stay as it is. Halfback room. Madison, Devin Ashane, James Cook, and Dwayne McBride. To be honest, I could see myself cutting James Cook here. Uh, can we add him to the practice squad? Uh, no. Oh, that is sad. Okay, we have to get rid of him. Uh, Dwayne McBride, I'm certainly not going to cut him. Uh, Devin Ashane, certainly not going to cut him. So James Cook will have to go. We won't be getting anything for him. So let's just release him quickly. Uh, we could try and trade him, but yeah, let's just get it over with. Fullback, no changes. Wide receiver, no changes. We have five wide receivers here. Tight end room, Nate McKenzie, Darnell Washington, and Thomas Fidoni. That is going to stay as it is. Left tackler room. All right. Who do we have here? We've got Jalen Mayfield, and we've got PJ Williams, which is the rookie. And I think I'm going to cut Jalen Mayfield. Um, don't really feel like he... Uh, has a lot to add currently. He's only a backup player. Plus, we just brought in a rookie, so we might as well go that route. Left guard Ezra Cleveland and Zion Nelson. Do we have a dev trade for him? Let's just check this out. At a start of trade, this is nice. So he got a, a dev trade after all. That is good. Center, Amari Smims. We've got Darian Dalcourt. And we've got Jared Patterson. Oh, damn it. I have to cut Jared. No. I really like him, though. He was so good. Uh, on on the uh, my, uh, on the Miami Dolphins franchise, but I just don't have any use for him here. I've got two fantastic young centers that will be growing way quicker, way better, um, and I don't really need him. So sorry, Jared. Uh, we've got Edwin Edingham here, right guard. We've got Ernest Green behind him with a 73 rating. This is positive. Right tackle, Evan Neal and Darnell Wright. This is good. Left edge, Aiden Hutchinson. Uncontested Tyler Barron. Do we have a dev trade here? Ah, uh, that's a normal dev trade. All right, I can work with that. But we have Jordan Freund here, who's 23 and 74 rated. I think we should be able to slap him into the practice squad. So there we go. On right edge, Andre Carter and Brandon Dorless. Does Dorless have a dev trade? Nope, it's a normal dev trade. That is okay by me. Andre Carter, fantastic. D tackle. All right, time to get rid of players. Top three, I want to keep those. Fedarian Mathis with a 78 rating. Can we add him to the practice squad? No. So we're going to have to release him. Um, 
he, he's a solid player, but he's not going to play any role for us here. JJ Peguis, or however you pronounce that, off to the practice squad you go, my man. And then we've got Dwayne Carter, same thing. We're going to slap him in the practice squad. Not really crazy about this player here. Uh, Rook or Horhoro. I mean, that's just a made-up name, right? We're going to move him to the practice squad as well. I didn't sign all of these players. This is basically... Uh, the CPU doing that for me again. I don't like when it happens, but okay. Why would I sign four D tackles when I only need one? Uh, next up, left outside linebacker DJ One M. We've got Jeremiah John Baptista. Works mid linebackers. We've got four, which is good. Kenneth Murray Jr., Jack Campbell, Brian Asamoah, and CJ Washington, who is the rookie. We've got the right outside linebacker in the room sorted. Marcus Davenport will stay on as soon as Clayton Smith is better. He will move up here. And he still has that start of trade, shiny as always. The cornerback room, we're going to have to clear out this a little bit. Byron Murphy, Andrew Booth, Mikhail Black, and Tyson Huntington, they're all going to stay. Uh, Tariq Chappelle, you are a player that is bound for the practice squad. He's looking good with the 71 overall, but uh, he could be doing a little bit better, I think. Can we? No, we cannot, right? Let's see if we have to cut Jay Ward here. Free safety. Um, let's put Percy Butler into the practice squad. He is the same age as... And we can't do that, right? So we will have to cut him. There we go. Goodbye, my man. Strong safety. This is settled. Kicker and punter are looking good. Do we have to cut another player? Do we have... No, we don't have to. All right, this is nice. Let's upgrade the players one final time here. I'm going to do that by the quick upgrade. Kaboom. There we go. A lot of points distributed. I would love a quick distribute point for the staff upgrades as well. But who's asking? <laughs> um, all right, with that said and done, guys, I'm going to leave you with this final picture of the Minnesota Vikings team. That has been so great here. That has been so good, so prolific. I really did extremely well. We also have two players going up to star devs. That's uh, Mims and Cleveland. Really very well deserved, guys. Um, Going to be moving up Fidoni ahead here as my second tight end with Nate McKenzie, Neil Ingram, Mims, Cleveland, and Darisov. Fantastic offensive line, adding a lot of protection here. Um, we've got Jordan Addison, who, who's overtaking Justin Jefferson right now. This is crazy. We've got Nigel Sowell, 93 rated Rager. We've got Kindley. We have some more space for another uh, wide receiver, I think. Uh, but here we've got this extremely good setup um, with the uh, running back rooms. Uh, running back room uh, on defense we're also looking super solid i love this picture hutchinson smith carter uh, we've got byron murphy jr and the booth jr we've got louis seen on the other side we've got metellus uh, campbell uh, murray here i want to have clayton smith um although so i'm gonna shove him up just a little bit because he's almost as good as marcus davenport who's a fantastic backup to have don't get me wrong we've got campbell here Going to put Asamoah slightly ahead, though. So Asamoah and Kenneth Murray Jr., DJ Wadham, Josh Metellus. And that is our super solid defense. Really liking it a lot. Special teams are set, of course. The specialists have been set for the most part. I would be fixing this here to just give these players a little bit more game time. Use Shane here as the third down running back. And on the practice squad, we've got quite a bunch of players that... Uh, Probably I wouldn't really be needing, uh, but I would be adding players like this here. Bernard Morris, he's 83 rated. I mean, can we just can we just get over this? 24 and 83. Dustin Weaver, that's a cornerback, right? Just really good. 24 and 81. Quinton Freeman, a free safety. And here Prince Dorba, same thing. But let's go with this dude here because he's just a little bit higher rated. And by doing that, I would be just filling up the team with these players here that are just, yeah, that are just going to be helping us out if uh, we really have an injury, if we have to really compensate very quickly here. Um, and this just really works very well. Let's just put one final player in here. What about this left edge player, Nolan Keys? Now let's go with Pierre Phillips here. He's a bit younger, plus he's also got the 76 rating. And now we've sort of filled up the practice squad. We are ready for the next season. And this is where I will be ending this episode this is where i will be ending this franchise series this is where i will be ending madden 23 i hope you enjoyed uh what i did i hope you enjoyed the franchise series if you did do that drop me a like and subscribe to the channel it just means a lot to me as you know plus it also helps the channel and as always guys 
Thank you so much for being here. I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, you are the reason this journey is so special. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, thank you for being here. Take care and see you next time.